Alright, it's noisy to the to the tall one. And to live life very, um, what's the word I'm looking for? What is that dog? What is that dog? Hi guys, welcome to another video. I'm really um, trying to be consistent with my videos, my weekly videos. Um, at least every friday saturday trying to be consistent and so far i think the past two weeks i've i've been consistent so long long may continue today is my baby's birthday caleb nazir is one today i can't believe that it's been a year already um caleb nazir for those that don't know means faithful set apart one caleb means faithful um it's one word it's his name it's not caleb it's not in Sao Paulo, they say Kalebi because that's that's the that's the equivalent. But it's Caleb Nazir, um, that's his name, not Caleb. And Nazir refers to the Nazarites, not Nazarenes. A lot of people assume that it's it's um, Nazarenes. It's not Nazarenes. It's Nazarites. A Nazarene is just someone who who um, came from Nazareth. But the Nazarite were actually um, Israelites who 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 committed themselves to to God basically they didn't cut their hair my my husband is hinting that but I don't know about that but they didn't cut their hair they didn't drink alcohol um, they were set apart for 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 God to use basically and they committed and they lived their lives like that um, so that's that's what Caleb Nazir means so I just decided that I'm going to share listen the video um, BTS of his photo shoot I shared the pictures on Instagram and I'll probably share it on my community page as well um but bds of his photo shoot he was actually a good sport i was impressed <laughs> yeah i think he was more confused than like whoa these people just staring at me and you know like what's going on um he wasn't fussy at all i'm just gonna i'm going to share his birth story today i know that i've shared on my community um page as well i think on mother's day i shared a blog post about you know my pregnancy and how after the first trimester it was a breeze um, I know that I, I prayed for a symptomless um, pregnancy and I didn't get that for the first trimester but I got it from the first trimester onwards it was really a breeze it was it was an easy pregnancy um, going on and my symptoms were not as bad you know as I've heard that they could be I didn't I had a lot of nausea but I didn't throw up I didn't have morning sickness and things like that um, I had a bit of ex I had not a bit I had exhaustion that was the one that I didn't I didn't expect you know but I really just kept believing and I said Lord you know I will get the pregnancy that I desire I believe that is possible and and I think about 12 12 between 10 and 12 weeks everything started wearing off and I had I had so much strength actually second trimester third trimester I actually had so much strength I didn't no symptoms came back I was actually really good even though it was a big baby um so it was heavy but I I carried him and I carried him well um for the second and third trimester so, so that was awesome so i wanted to share his birth story um i will start from where will i start from i might as well start from labor right i remember it was a i'm trying it's it's, it's amazing how a year passes by and the details get fuzzy <laughs> because postpartum is another thing um but i remember that we had gone for a walk yes i believe it was sunday night yes um in fact i actually no i actually i go i went out on sunday yes i actually went out on sunday i remember like it was the day it was the day before he was due or the day after he was due i can't remember the little details anymore but i remember that uh, matthew and i went for our friend's birthday party and a lot of people were seeing me they were like are you not like do you are you not like 40 weeks like are you know and i was like ah yo see i might as well go out since this boy you know is taking his time so i think so i think i was like a, a few days over or a couple of days over there about so i know that i went went for the birthday party and i think the next day we had some friends come over and then matthew and i decided to go for a walk so we went for a walk um and then i came back and later that night i knew that i started having contractions in the beginning it starts off slow well for some people it's like all the way but you know it starts off slow but I, I started suspecting that okay these are probably like early 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 contractions um 
at some point and you know i just slept at some point in the night i woke up because they were getting stronger i started timing them at that point i lost my my uh what's they call it a, a bloody show or your mucus plug i don't know if they're different or the same thing because i was really confused about this and i was like which one is bloody show which one is mucus plug so I, I think both happened or they're the same thing i don't know but i know that i knew what to look out for so i was like okay i'm i'm in labor um and i remember that i said okay i'm i'm in early stages of labor and i told i sent a message to the chief uh, midwife the chief the the matron yes the the senior nurse at the hospital and i explained everything to her but then i know that that day i was supposed to go for my appointment anyway you know so she was like so she was like okay since you're coming in for your appointment just explain everything to the doctor and everything and you know i could feel like the contractions were enough to like make me breathless make me pause a bit you know i could feel them and i was like okay you know i'm in labor i'm definitely in labor and so we we just we packed we packed my hospital bag we packed everything just in case <laughs> i was going to come back with the baby you know we packed everything hospital bag we packed everything you know into the car and and we went and it's so funny how you know i think we shared i don't know if we've shared this before but i remember that we changed hospitals like when i was 37 weeks we changed hospitals really we changed hospitals like really late because i just i wasn't at peace with the one i was at and we changed hospitals um and so you know the funny thing is that the hospital that we changed to was a lot further we were in lake it was in kui it was a lot further than than the house and i used to be so worried that this hospital that we felt led to change to, I hope that it will not backfire because you know what if what if I'm in labor and there's a lot of traffic because Lagos has a lot of traffic, you know how how is that going to how is that going to like how will I survive it and it's it's so interesting how I, I don't I don't know what happened but I know that I got into the car and I slept all the way to the hospital. Um, I can't even remember if there was traffic or not. My contractions literally just stopped. I don't know what happened, but on that journey, on that car ride, I didn't have any contractions and I slept all the way there. When I got to the hospital and I got down from the car, my contractions started again. Like I had, I had like, I had it come and go, you know? And I was like, I was like, thank you, Jesus. That's all I can say because only you know how, how this thing worked out so perfectly. And you know, we got, got to the hospital, we saw the doctor, and you know, as when I was like, can I go back home? It was like, unless you live really, really close by, I would not recommend, you know, because for me, I wanted to labor as much as possible at home and then come, you know, come to the hospital like right at the end. But it's it's Lagos, so, you know, you can be stuck in traffic. And I was like, if, if you don't live like next door, I would not recommend it, you know. So we got a room, um, gave me an injection and, the journey started the journey of laboring started and you know my 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 i would say that my labor was progressing but it wasn't progressing so it was actually progressing but um for you know when they check your service for you know how far you've been dilated and stuff like that you know for my contractions were getting stronger faster you know because i, I began to time them and they were increasing but then it was like my cervix was not um as fully dilated like at the rate i wish they were coming at some point i expected that i would be fully dilated and my water hadn't broken yet you know so i had some amazing friends come over they helped me you know put hot water that thing is a lifesaver when you're having contractions you know putting a hot water towel like on your waist because there's something about when there are two points of pain your brain cannot focus on many points of pain at the same time so many times we'll focus on one so anytime i'd have a contraction my friend would put like the hot water um, towel on my waist and press down and i would feel that you know instead of the contraction so that really helped at a point in time i said no epidural no pain and to be honest if i had someone you know doing the hot water towel i'd have probably been able to push through but she had to go because she has children she has a family so she left like you know late in the night um and so I got an epidural um i got a walking epidural i got an epidural that still allows you to move around so even though my balance was off i could still move my legs but i couldn't feel um 
um, the pain. I couldn't feel the pain of the contractions anymore. It was just more like pressure. Um, even though it got to a point that it wore off and it was too late to, to increase it, but it helped me. I slept for about two hours and then, and then the, the, the journey, the real journey began. Um, and that was when like, I, I woke up and you know, my, my left hip, I believe was really in pain. And I knew that, okay, we're actually at the end now. Um, and you know, I had again, some amazing friends who stayed over and you know we're just praying 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 in the room um praying in the room and then i finally my water my waters had trickled before finally my water broke and the thing with labor you feel like you want to poo <laughs> i really really felt like i wanted to poo and i thought okay baby's coming now but it wasn't it was my water's breaking and my water's like gushed out all over the floor i'm like oh everybody started rushing like I need to get her to the you know I think to the labor, not the labor room, the, the place where you actually have the baby. It's not in, you know, where you labor, it takes you to that, you know. And, you know, I was there, I was there for, for a long time because I was fully dilated, my waters were broken. So ideally, Caleb Nazir should have come out very soon after, but he didn't, you know, there was a lot of push. I was, I was, I just went screaming out. It was, it was actually those last few hours, you know, I didn't even know what time. <laughs> was going but it was it was that was you know the height of it and Matthew was there every step of the way um encouraging me um just you know egging me on because at some point I was really really exhausted and I wasn't sure I could push anymore um so at at the tail end to assist me they gave me pitocin I didn't want pitocin at all it's a form of injection it's a well, induction that you know increases your contractions but they could see that I was exhausted because you know, I was at the tail end, baby should have come, but he wasn't coming. And even at some point, the matron didn't really understand why he wasn't coming. You know, so she was helping to massage my belly and everything. They gave me pitocin to help me at the last stage. They asked me, do do, do you want us to cut you? That's an episiotomy. I said, yes. I said, I just need this baby to come out because I don't know why he's not coming out, <laughs> you know. And so they cut me and, you know, as a boy, Matthew was like, um, babe he's actually coming he has a full head of hair and it was at that point i knew that okay i'm at the end um i don't know why i get emotional at this point but i was like okay um i'm at the end of this because if if he can actually see and funny enough the lord had told matthew that you know we'd have a baby with a full head of hair if he can actually see his his head of hair then then he's fine then he's actually he, you know he's coming out and you know so um all of that happened and because a lot of people were saying that you're almost there almost there and i just said almost there how many hours later like you guys are lying to me so when matthew said that i said okay this baby boy is actually coming and you know they called me i didn't feel it because you know they numbed the area so i didn't even feel it really and then you know i didn't really understand what was going on so so they brought him out and i was wondering why they're not bringing him out you know they brought him out but apparently and this was why the label was longer than it should have been apparently he the cord was wrapped around his neck up like three times so every time i was contraction and pushing you know and he was coming out like the cord was pulling him back in so he would come out he would pull him back in um and you know apparently he was already in distress when he came out he wasn't breathing and he was he was in distress already because um um he had begun to so the first baby poo is called meconium and he had begun to um in fact there was no dignity i was i was all over the place i was releasing all sorts of fluids you know and i was releasing meconium meaning that he was actually pooing he was pooing in in my belly um and that's what something that he should have done when he was born but he was already doing that because he was in distress you know so when he came out he wasn't breathing so you know they just brought out his neck they saw the cord um so they quickly had to get the to, to cut yeah to cut the cord to release his neck um and yeah they brought him out um matthew matthew went with him and spoke over him praying over him um and they were doing all the suction trying to get everything he wasn't breathing so trying to like get everything out of his lungs um i wasn't there but matthew said that there was a lot there was actually a lot um and yeah eventually he started crying matthew carried him and everything and they had to stitch stitch me up with the episiotomy they had to stitch that up um that was quite i mean i didn't really feel it but 
I think at some point <laughs> I started feeling it, you know, and that was that was that was quite um what do I say traumatic it was you know and i i think I think the thing is I had a birth plan, and my whole birth plan went out the window. <laughs> My whole birth plan went out the window, but the thing is, my baby was born and he was fine and he was healthy and he was, he was fine and you know I was fine. I didn't hemorrhage, no excess bleeding. You know I was obviously I was well, I was exhausted, <laughs> but you know I didn't hemorrhage and I think it was it was really that it was the next day that the chief the chief matron was telling us that see that and the funny thing is that she she's like the most experienced um apart from the doctor and she was actually going to leave. She wasn't planning on doing the night shift. But, you know, when Matthew saw her, she was like, no, that she's going to stay. And she really helped with the way she was massaging my belly, which is like traditional, you know, uh, method. Yeah. But she really helped. And she told us that she, she was calling him. I can't remember the name that she called him. When we went back to the clinic, she said the one that was destined to live because she was worried and she could tell that something was wrong, that why is he not coming? I should come out since. Why is, you know, why is labor not progressing? Um, ideally, or depending on the hospital, I may have been rushed into an emergency C-section. I'm grateful that that didn't happen because after laboring that long, now going to C-section, I'd have been so upset. Um, so I'm actually grateful that that didn't happen. There's nothing wrong with the C-section, but I would prefer that I plan it than for it to come after hours of labor, right? So, um, you know, she was like that, that really, oh, that, that, you know, he was in distress and I think I think when he came out his face was blue. I think he had lost lost um oxygen and you know, like it was she was like it was actually quite serious, you know, but we thank God that everything ended well. Um and so that is Caleb Nazir's birth story. The one when we went back for, when we went in the next day for because I wanted to go home. I went home the that day. I said, Please can I go home that day? I just wanted to be in my house. You know, when we went back the next day for his um injection, she she just said the one that was destined to live and I said, That's my son. The one that was destined to live. So um that is Caleb Nazir's birth story. It it was it was interesting and God provided. I mean, we didn't plan budget wise for an epidural, you know, we had to get that. And God just really just, God provided every, every step of the way, every extra, extra cost he provided. And it was, it was an interesting experience. I was a bit, you know, traumatic after, afterwards. Postpartum is another, is another thing to deal with. There is so much that you are learning and your body is still healing. Um, I think my scar was really, to be honest, I was not on top of my painkillers. If I had been on top of my painkillers, then I would have probably had a breeze, but I was not on top of my painkillers, so I was in pain a lot. Um, but um, I think I just wanted to share that today. My baby's a miracle, and every baby is a miracle, whether easy birth or um, hard birth or fast birth, short birth, long birth long delivery every every baby every baby is a miracle and i think for those that are that are waiting um or that are you know expecting i would say keep an open mind i had a full birth plan which we went through with the doctor they sent it you know everywhere i know it's a birth plan i couldn't do skin to skin because that's cut i wanted to do delayed cord clamping i wanted to do skin to skin so many things that i wanted to do you know both of us, I could even breastfeed immediately. Both of us, he, I think he was even too exhausted after his own. He just slept, you know, he couldn't latch in the beginning. Um, later on, he did though, painful, but <laughs> he did. Um, but like, we we're both too exhausted. So there was a lot that, there was just a lot that, that didn't happen according to my birth plan. But the thing is, hey, our, our God had a plan or has a plan for, for Caleb Nazir, has a plan for me, for my family. So, should I say all all that all that there's 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 a saying all that ends well all that means well ends well, please if you know the saying write it in the comments. Um, so yeah, that's the Caleb Nazir. We did a little photo shoot before we left Nigeria because we hadn't done any pictures, family pictures or baby pictures, none. So we did a photo shoot before we left Nigeria with the amazing captured by Adesua. Um, so check out the BTS. I'll probably post as well the pictures on my community page. I posted them on my on my Instagram page. Everything is gem. But thank you guys for listening. Um, 
there are any mummies out there um please share if you're okay with doing that share your own birth story it was it, i realized that you know my friend was taking videos i realized that i couldn't watch those videos for a long time after and i realized that that birth was actually a bit traumatic to me um and i had to heal from it but i have healed from it and i'm grateful for every step of the way i see my boy i see how i'm doing hey we're doing fine so what i'll say is see anyway the way god created human beings the way god created women we bounce back we heal we actually heal the human body is incredible with the way it heals actually like you know fully healed fully um fully restored fully whole um and i'm really grateful to, for that so hope you guys enjoyed this and enjoy the rest of the video ciao ciao I da 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 Look at him. 
Can you look at me, Daddy? Just leave me here. Yeah. Alright, it's not easy to be. to be But then you are bending. <laughs> Don't worry, just stay. You are looking for this hiding. Alright, Papa, here, sir. Yeah, that's it. Aww. Uh, are you tired? Are you tired? <laughs> You're like, God, can you?